And just two years after that one, you, you played this shock jock who reaches out to a guy whose life he'd inadvertently shattered in The Fisher King. Mm. As one last question before we go to our next clips, what was it like working with the late, great Robin oh, Williams? Oh, man. God. <laughs> so amazing. Uh, you know, and Terry Gilliam, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I was, I was, you know, my anxiety on that one kind of manifested uh, in thinking, God, this Robin Williams, man, he's a comedian. You know, I've got these long, this long monologue and some serious stuff I got to do. He's going to be, you know, busting my chops and messing with that. This is my fear, right? And we get to that scene in the movie, and you know, just the opposite. He he was in he's in a coma. He's supposed to be in a coma, you know, just out dead. And I got this long, and I think he's gonna, you know, be teasing me and stuff. But no, he was just so uh, silently supportive. Not it didn't go to sleep. He could have just gone. But no, he was just there for me, man. And I came to realize that uh, as brilliant a comedian as he was, that was just. Uh, a tool in his kit bag. He was a consummate actor, man. Yeah. I mean, he really knew his stuff. And uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking of the the only moment. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking of a couple of a couple of a couple of things. Uh, uh, one one time, you know, we worked long hours on that movie, and this was like about four o'clock in the morning. You know, we're working. Everyone's dragging, and uh, Robin gets up and plants his feet and starts to go around and just jam on every member in the crew and the cast, you know, just busting their chops, you know, and had people laughing, you know, and, uh, you know, at some, you know, most directors would say, all right, Robin, that's funny, now sit down, let's get back to work, but Terry would just egg him on, man, <laughs> go, been doing it for like a half hour, and, uh, <laughs> And finally, the result of that was everybody's spirit was up and we were good for, you know, another couple of hours. That's great. The only time I ever uh, saw Robin uh, lack any kind of comment at all on something was, again, one of these late nights and we're under one of the bridges in New York and we're just exhausted, man. And I say, Robin, let's you know, go sit a little over there on the... I don't know, it was a bench, it wasn't a bench, it was some trash cans or something. He goes, yeah, yeah. We go over, as soon as we sit down, a whole, what do they call, a bevy of pigeons? What do you call a bunch of pigeons? Just empty their shit all over. <laughs> and we just like, you know, looked at each other like that, and just not, not a word. There's nothing to say. <laughs> and then let me just say one other thing about uh, Fisher King. Are any of you guys from New York? Yeah? Are you, do you know Radio Man? Does that mean? Yeah, Radio Man. So while we're making this movie, there's a guy who comes up on a bicycle and he's got this radio and he looks just like Robin's character. And we thought, oh, is this who Robin is, you know, was modeling his character after? And uh, no, it was just total coincidence. <laughs> And he would, he would be there all during the show, and now whenever I'm in New York, he somehow knows where all the movies are being shot better than the people who are actually working on the movie. <laughs> You'll see him falling all around. And at, um, when uh, we opened The Giver in New York, and it happened to coincide just with Robin's death, and it was just a bizarre thing. We're going to a party to celebrate The Giver. And I see Robin walking down the street. I said, Robin, but it's not, it's radio, man. Wow. And we hugged and cried. Wow. Robin was so, such a wonderful guy, man. So well, generous. Let's...